Okay, I'm not making this up, and I swear I'm not under the influence of something, but the guy who did make it up might have been under the influence of a great many things. I'm continuing to read the short stories of Philip K. Dick following watching the Adjustment Bureau, I think the movie was called. And the story I read most recently is one of the weirdest things I think I've ever read. It's called A Present for Pat. And I'm gonna go ahead and just spoil the whole thing here. So if you want to experience this firsthand for yourself, you know, stop the video here, go read the book for yourself. Okay, so basically, Eric comes home to his wife, Pat, in the not-too-distant future. I think doors talk to you, and they, like, seriously, they can, you know, communicate, like, have a dialogue with you. More on that later. Basically, he comes home with a present for her. And she's like, oh, is it jewelry? Is it, you know, is it something? And then she's like, oh, what is that? And it's like this little figure, I think it says it's 10 inches high. I don't know what that is in those weird American numbers. Anyway, it's like a god. Not, not an idol, it's a, a weather god. And basically, you know, they, they feed it, it wakes up, and Pat isn't very happy, so she sort of insults it, and, you know, one of Eric's colleagues, I think Matt Matson or something like that, comes by, and he's like, I don't believe that's a god, you know, and the god explains, well, technically I'm not a god, you know, I'm from a higher plane of space continuums, something. And, you know, he's like, oh, it's, it's not even a god, and then the god throws him out the door with some sort of telekinesis and it turns him into a toad and then it turns Pat into like stone and then the real weirdness starts because this is when Eric is like not oh you know you have to turn my wife back she, he's just like you know the, the god falls asleep and he goes up to his wife he doesn't say I'm gonna fix this I swear to you before this day is over, you will not be made of stone anymore. No, he just goes up and says, it's not my fault, I didn't do it, it's, it's a god. And then he's like, and he kisses her on the cheek as if she were still, you know, there. And then, you know, the boss calls and tells him that he and Matson have to be there right now. And he's like, oh yeah, Matson's here, but you can't talk to him and he doesn't do the awesome bogey line of, because he's dead. No, it's just, well, I can't explain why you can't talk to him. Okay, well, come here, both of you, right now. And he's like, okay. Okay. He brings the toad into his boss's office, says, that's Matson. Swear to it. And, yeah, so, another colleague, Jennings, comes in, and, you know, they say, well, that's Matson. And he's not like, oh my god, my partner is a toad. No, he's just like, are you sure? Because he used to be taller. Yes, literally. That is his reaction. And, you know, at this point Eric is like, no, you know, sure, he, he can still work and just make sure he can communicate with you because for some reason he's sure that this toad still does have the mind of Matt and, you know, that the brain hasn't been compromised in any kind of way. And that does turn out to be true somehow. Anyway, Eric is fired, he goes home, kisses his wife on the lips because that's what you do when you get home from work and, you know, your wife is there, you know, it doesn't matter that she's turned to stone. And at this point, he, you know, tells the god, okay, this is it, you're gonna fix this stuff, you know, and then the god is like, well, sure, I can turn him back from a toad. Wait, you say he's not here? Well, my powers have a bit of a limitation on how far they go, but if you could get me closer, but they don't really get to doing that because the robot police show up and they start bombarding the place with like shells and like the god makes a shield but the concussion he can't keep out so the house is still you know left in ruins somewhere along somewhere around here he turns the wife back to you know a regular person he didn't even need a an absurdly large diamond ring. 
so that's really nice. And, yeah, the boss starts, you know, talking about how, oh, you're going to spend some years in jail, you're going to spend ten years in jail for bringing something alien onto this planet that's living, or something like that. And at this point I should interject, earlier on, when the god was explaining that it techno wasn't a god, it said that it's here on this plane of reality because it's following something called Nalt Dark or something, and it's another god, and it's like a trickster god, so I guess Loki or something, and it wants to find him, you know, so it allowed itself to be put here. I won't even try to say the the god itself's name because it's just I don't know I, I have a feeling he put like you know a bunch of he had like a, a dice with letters on it and he just kept rolling it or something because it's just yeah anyway suddenly the god yeah I think the boss like grabs the god and the god is like no, Dark, it's you! And, you know, yeah, it is him. And he's like, oh, crap, you found me. And then he turns into a dragon. And starts flying, and then the the, the god, you know, go, goes after him, catches him, destroys him, and I think both of them just, like, kind of disappear after that. I guess, you know, once the god is taken care of Nult Dork or something, he just goes away, you know, because his yeah, mission accomplished. Report back to base. And Eric is like, oh, I'm sorry, honey. Now your present is gone. And Pat is like, you know what, I'm happier without it. Yeah. And that was the ending. That, yeah. One big WTF moment, yes.